Now there's certainly a time for planting perennials like clover and chicory in your food plots. And that time that you plant them can really provide you success or failure. And what I'm talking about is a spring versus a summer months versus going into the fall. Now if you think about it, just general planting, you want moisture and you want weed control. And so you also want a high quality attraction going into the fall. That sets up the perfect time to plant a perennial is not the spring. I see so many people going out and planting clover this time of year. And a lot of times those clover fields are destined for failure. One of my major food plot failures going back into 2099 right around there was a great crop of clover in the spring that looked six, eight inches high in lush end of May, June. And then we literally in the UP of Michigan had nine weeks of drought where we only had an inch of rain. Clover shriveled up and died and it didn't have that root base established to withstand that drought. The best time to plant perennials is with a fall cover crop during the late summer. And late summer, I mean August sometime, uh, especially early August, mid-August, if you're in the upper Midwest, uh, the Midwest, the north half of the country. Uh, if you're down in southern Indiana, southern Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, Iowa, Missouri, that line, maybe you'd want to wait till middle of August towards the third, fourth week of August. August ends up being the perfect time to plant for most food plotters in the north half of the country. Think about it, when you're putting that perennial in, then moisture is increasing as the fall progresses, then you get, get that shot of winter dormancy, and then you get a huge shot of moisture the following spring. At the same time, weeds are dying during the fall, not thriving. And so when that crop actually gets into the following summertime, then it has enough of a root base to withstand even the nastiest of droughts. So consider planting, and I'm gonna to talk to you about right now a great way to plant it. This is, there's a lot of ways to plant your perennials. What I love about planting perennials in the end of the, the summer is that you can use a cool season cover crop that actually maximizes the potential growth of that clover, chicory base. It also shades it in case there's any type of drought and you can get a, a very successful stand going into the hunting season. But then you have that cool season annual to act as a giant attraction for your fall whitetail parcel and so you can establish that clover at a time when you can actually help the deer herd during the fall you can maximize the amount of growth and potential uh, volume of food going into the winter time you can fatten up those deer and then when they exit out of the out of the uh, winter time and into the spring they have that full buffet of food source that they can hit right away and so a lot of times people think about well we need to add food during the winter time which is tough to do it's tough to get food into that time unless you can feed supplementally which isn't always a good idea really think about those weeks leading up to the winter time and those weeks just after winter time where spring green up hasn't even taken place for example wheat or rye can cover two to four weeks before spring green up it is also a great cover crop for perennials. You can take care of the weed or rye in the spring, get rid of it by mowing, and uh, also using herbicide. And then you have that perennial base. This, what we're doing this year, is a system that I developed back in 99 and 2000, a system that I experimented with, pioneered. And, and it's using buckwheat, which obviously buckwheat and rye rotations have been used for years. But this is a, this is a process and a system, I call it the ultimate no-till system, where we have buckwheat growing into dead rye. You can see all the dead and decaying rye and weeds all around us. And we have buckwheat already emerging. It's coming up all over. I mean, thousands of plants all around me. And what that buckwheat is great for is a smother crop. I'm not looking at it as necessarily a feeding crop during the summertime because around here, the deer have five times more than they need. So this isn't really providing any extra nutrition. And the great thing about it, it's not a real high browse um, attraction food source. So the deer leave it alone, they go out to the ag fields around here. Alfalfa is a lot better, soybeans a lot better. This is just a pass through. Where if I had soybeans down here, we wouldn't see all these tops of buckwheat here. They'd already be nipping them and taking them off. So buckwheat is a great summer crop. It's a great smother crop. Make sure that weeds, it produces a full canopy quickly. Now that canopy will be here within two weeks. This is germinated, it's already plants within a week. And then now within two weeks and now it'll be a full smother crop. Buckwheat is great because there'll be a lot of soil left below because there's no weeds growing under that buckwheat. 
So when I come in here and I want to plant, if I wanted to plant a perennial base, even with brassica, which I started mixing those in 99, brassica and clovers. And you could plant that seed right into the standing buckwheat. We will crush and cult a pack with a Packer Max, the buckwheat over the seed that's on the soil because it's been shaded, there's no weeds. And then I'll follow up with a spring, which will keep that soybean down and, uh, or keep that uh, buckwheat down. And then you have a great fall crop. Now you can seed late planted soybeans into that. We'll plant forage peas this year, oats, a lot of rye, and then of course our brassica blends. And we'll plant that, seed that right into the standing buckwheat, either half of the plot in our case, which, which is what we're going to do. We'll call the pack that buckwheat down. We'll spray it to make sure it stays down and, and to combat any weed growth. And then we'll have great fall crops. And in this area, we've had a lot of erosion. There's actually some cuts going right through the side of this field. So we're ending the food plots there. I've already frost seeded switchgrass that's coming in. And so we're gonna take out our erosion control and we're gonna make sure that this does not erode again. Also up into this cut here, we expanded the food plot over the last three years. That's been eroding pretty bad with our, with our hard rains. Um, I said earlier in another video, but we lost several homes in Coon Valley last August because of 15 and a half inches of rain. It was, it was terrible. And you know, not as bad as Nebraska and out there right now, but boy, we had it bad here and we had some erosion. So that whole pocket up in here, we've converted to frost seed and switchgrass. So that's a big mat of switchgrass to combat the, the water that's coming down through this cut. So we're making this into a food plot using the buckwheat, no-till system. We don't have to actually till or disc up the soil. It's a small food plot. We have to use chemicals in this case. We don't have fancy no-till drills and expensive machinery and crimpers to use. And so this is a system that anybody can use. It's a great way to establish perennials at the right time of the year. Consider August for establishing your perennials and not the springtime. If you have a lot of weeds, if you have drought, your clover is very poor and you want to establish clover on your property and that's a fit for you, consider a cool season cover crop. I've used oats, rye, and brassicas as a cover crop for both chicory and clover at that time of year. You can frost seed any holes that are open in the soil of lack of uh, clover growth in the spring. It's a great way to plant your perennials. It's a great time to plant your perennials. This is, we're using the ultimate no-till system going back to my roots of the late 90s and early 2000s with the system this year to plant it. And whether we were planting clover, oats, peas, whatever, late planted soybeans, brassicas, that's a great time of the year to plant it all. And you can have that perennial base going into 2020 and maximize the use of your space, making sure that you're eliminating future weed concerns, the potential for drought, and of course, erosion in this case, where we can have that standing cover crop and smother crop of buckwheat all summer long. It's a great system. I encourage you to consider planting your perennials at the end of the summer, and it'll be a great fit for your land, your deer herd, and ultimately, a great hunt this season.